begins now. 8 a.m. now. Good morning and thanks so much for being with us here on Up With Creme. Well, if you're looking to get out of the house, the Numerica Sky Ride in Riverfront Park is half off right now. It's open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Sunday. Well, right now, they are not accepting cash due to safety concerns, but that special does run through October 31st. Boy, and if you have the beauty shots from Spokane Falls from the Skyride, we'd love to see them and show them off here on Up With Creme. You can text us at 509-448-2000. Joshua, I know that's on your bucket list for Spokane. Oh, yeah, and especially with a promotion like this, I'm probably going to be getting out there. I might even go today, especially with, you know, looking for other ways to kind of celebrate that the weather is cooling down just a little bit. I would love to get that good view of the falls, Jen. Definitely put it on your list of things to check out. Riverfront Park is so pretty, and that... Sky ride takes you just right over the water. You, uh, you know, not for the fear of uh, heights. <laughs> you know, it can be a little sketchy for some folks, but it's really, really pretty. Highly recommend it. Okay, we'll do. I, I mean, I'll take your recommendation very seriously, Jen. So I'll head out there and hopefully, maybe I can send in one of my pictures to the text line. As you should. All right, 801 now, and you were mentioning the weather, and it's going to be a great day to get outside. Let's check in with Evan and Ronnie in the Outdoor Weather Center this morning with what we need to plan for. Good morning, guys. Yeah, an overcast day as we kick off our Thursday. Earlier this morning, we did allow for kind of partly cloudy conditions as the sun was just beginning to come up, but now pretty much fully overcast. Still some showers to contend with that are mainly making their way through the North Idaho Panhandle. So the first thing we'll throw up here is our satellite radar loop that shows how significant that cloud cover is across the state of Washington and where those showers have been over the last several hours, including that long stretch all the way through the North Idaho Panhandle, even a couple thunder and lightning strikes off toward the Idaho and Montana border. Here's what we have as far as the wind speeds right now. Still going to be an issue related to our fire danger this afternoon as we've got gusts in the 20 to 30 mile per hour range. Sustained speeds mainly in the single digits, which is looking pretty good out there, but notice that that's really the case across the board. So regardless of where you are, you've got in some cases high single digit wind speeds and then gusts in the 20 to 30 mile per hour range. Going to be cooler today and these clouds actually could keep us a few degrees cooler than what we originally expected even with 84. Could rest at about 82 or 83 degrees this afternoon, 89 for your Friday, and then as we head into your Saturday, cooler temperatures at 81 for that afternoon high, but a very pleasant start to the morning out here. Uh, if you want to spend some of your morning outside, maybe a light jacket on hand, but otherwise temperatures are fairly mild out here right now in the mid 60s. I'll send things back over to you guys. Thank you very much, Evan. Coming up on 803 this morning, Governor Jay Inslee has issued a state of emergency in response to multiple wildfires now in central and eastern Washington, as well as the Olympic Peninsula. Now, in a state of emergency, the governor can activate the Washington National Guard to help battle wildfires. The Guard can also help protect homes, businesses, and natural resources. Now, this morning, we do have a few updates for wildfires, starting with the Palmer Fire. It is burning in Okanagan County near OMAC. Level 3 evacuation orders are now expanded. It means get out now. This applies to areas along the loomis Oroville Road from Chapica Road to Totes Coulee Road. Level 2 evacuations applied to the area extending one and a half miles east of Wanaka Lake Road from Ellis Barnes Road in the north and south to Richards Road. It means be ready to go at a moment's notice. Now that fire sparked Tuesday, burning about 5,000 acres so far. And right now authorities say at least 86 homes are in danger. Crews from across the state were called in to help and the American Red Cross is assisting evacuees. Also this morning, the Badger Lake fire southwest of Cheney is now at 55% contained. Evacuation orders are reduced down to level two for Cutthroat Road and Badger Lake Estates. Just to remind you, level two means be ready to leave at a moment's notice. And this morning, the Chief Timothy fire is 30% contained. Flames scorched about 1,400 acres so far near Clarkston. So far, firefighters have kept it away from crops, and right now there are no evacuation notices. Authorities say it sparked earlier this week due to an RV fire. And all evacuations have been lifted for the Taylor Pond fire burning in Yakima County. That fire has burned nearly 25,000 acres. The Southeast Washington interagency team reports the fire was caused by a lightning strike. No structures have been damaged. And to keep up to date with the latest information on our area wildfires, all you have to do is text wildfire to 509-448-2000. 
Well, August has turned into a so-called smoke season in the past few years. This year, it does come with a warning from local health experts amid the pandemic. Nicole Hernandez is joining us to tell us how to better protect yourself from smoke and COVID-19. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Jen. So right now, obviously, we're all very used to wearing masks, but those masks that we're wearing don't help when that wildfire smoke rolls in. So here is what that means for how that's changing our day to day lives during wildfire season. We are encouraging people to now more than ever before to reduce outdoor physical activity when um, they see that there's a lot of smoke in the air. That's because the masks we're all required to wear right now are cloth masks, but the masks needed to prevent inhaling wildfire smoke is N95 masks. Normally, we are able to get those N95s and use them when we need to go outside, but now those are being reserved for medical staff. Wildfire smoke during the pandemic is also a problem because the symptoms of both are very similar. And if you have COVID-19, coughing from wildfire smoke can spread the virus even further. Now, here are some ways you can limit how much wildfire smoke you're breathing in. First off, just don't go outside as much if the air quality is bad. Avoid creating more smoke in your home and more particles. So try not to light candles, don't cook more than necessary, don't dust or vacuum, and try not to smoke cigarettes. Keep your windows closed and only use AC on recirculate, and make sure your air conditioner has a HEPA filter or at least make a makeshift fan filter. Now, if you are planning on doing any outdoor activity that's absolutely necessary during this wildfire season, make sure you're going to check the Spokane air quality before doing that. You can do that on SpokaneCleanAir.org. I have in Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Thank you very much, Nicole. 806 now, we are tracking breaking news. The Associated Press reports Steve Bannon, the former White House chief strategist for President Donald Trump, has been arrested and indicted for fraud. Bannon and three others are charged with defrauding donors in a fundraising scheme called We Build the Wall. The charges include one count of conspiracy to commit uh, wire fraud and one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering. Federal prosecutors allege that he and three others orchestrated an online crowdfunding campaign, and that campaign raised more than $25 million to build a wall along the southern border of the United States. Federal prosecutors said that while donors were assured 100% of the money raised would be used to build the wall, those claims were false. Instead, the DOJ says Bannon and his associates profited from that scheme. Time now for your morning rush. More news in less time. City council members in Sandpoint voted not to pass a mask mandate last night. The ordinance up for vote would have given the mayor authority to issue a public health emergency, which would require people within city limits to wear masks. Their vote came in with three no's and two yes votes. Other counties in Idaho have passed mask mandates. That includes Kootenai County, who passed theirs in late July. Bonner County has a total of 192 cases. 30 of those are active and no deaths have been reported. Family and friends of the mother murdered in Brown's edition will host a vigil to honor her life this Saturday. Two weeks ago, Mary Schaefer was visiting Spokane to pick up her kids when she was shot and killed by her ex-husband, Nathan Beal. While Mary's family and friends mourn her death, they also hope to bring awareness to domestic violence issues. The vigil will be held Saturday at 8.15 p.m. at Coeur d'Alene Park. Slade Gorton, a three-term U.S. Senator and a rare Republican lawmaker in the Democratic Washington State, has died. He was 92 years old, and in his 40-year political career, he served in the legislature and as a state attorney general before he became a senator. He later served on the 9-11 Commission. The Seattle Seahawks have announced plans to play their first three home games without fans. The first time the Seahawks could possibly have any paying customers inside would be on November 1st. That's according to the News Tribune. The Seahawks' first home game of the season will be against the New England Patri Patriots on September 20th. And you can now get an at-home COVID test from Albertsons. Test kits must first be requested online and can then, be, or once it's available, can then be picked up at the pharmacy or delivered. The cost is $139.99 and comes with a saliva sample kit rather than a nasal swab. After the test is mailed, results are supposed to be available within 48 to 72 hours. That's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag up with creme on social media. Coming up now on 810, well this morning in Pullman, wear a mask or face a $5,000 fine. That is the warning from Pullman Police.
But this morning, popular bar and restaurant The Coog is calling out customers who openly disapprove of those rules. Now, under the new rules, violating social distancing, masks, or public gathering guidelines are punishable with fines or up to one year in jail. Fines for a misdemeanor charge range from $100 to $350. Now, yesterday, the Coog tweeted about the rules, saying it will enforce them. They add, do not disperse your gatherings, then bring them to the Coog. You will be refused service. Now, this morning, the Coog is trending online. Owners are calling out customers who disapprove of their stance. One customer writes, she visited the Coog earlier this summer with her son, and she writes on Twitter, she was disappointed. A bartender told them masks are required. The Coog called them out, telling the customer to simply stay away. Owners add they care too much about their staff and other customers to let someone else, quote, ruin it for everyone, end quote. Now this morning, the Coog is receiving some backlash online. However, some customers are now buying gift cards to the bar to show support. Joshua, I think it brings up the wider conversation for all restaurants. Uh, they're trying to make do with what they can. They're also having to abide by certain rules and stipulations, but they also want to keep their customers safe. Yeah, they don't want to you know, be in violation of their own restrictions and have to close after they find out that they've actually created more of a problem by letting people in without masks. I guarantee you this is happening outside of our area all across the country. So I know a lot of restaurant owners that are like, we just want to make sure that we can not only continue to serve, but that once everything is lifted, that we haven't been forced to close permanently. So sort of a lot of a lot of things need to be considered this morning as we look at the way that restaurants are reacting all across the country. And for people who have been to the Coog, they know it is tiny, teeny tiny. So I mean, it'd be really hard to, to get everyone in yeah. there and social distance if you're crammed in there. So uh, it, it brings up a good conversation, not only for the Coog, but for a lot of different owners and businesses and, and what they're facing right. in light of the pandemic. Absolutely. All right, 812 now still to come here on Up With Creme. TSA is hosting a contest and they want the public to vote after the break. Who has the best sniffer in the business? Start off our morning, we'll be talking about what's to come this afternoon, including a chance for some showers plus cooler temperatures on the way. Buy Mart's big buys are back with great <clears throat> deals on a variety of items for your family's needs. Get your morning started right with a cup of MJB coffee or satisfy your munchies with Frito-Lay chips. Take care of your feathered friends with our great deal on birdseed. And keep your drinks cool in the summer heat with a Coleman 48-quart cooler. Head on over to your Raftrum Buy Mart to take advantage of these great deals and more. They're going until September 1st. Big brands, big value. Buy Mart, big buys. Gene, did you know GEICO is now offering an extra 15% credit on car and motorcycle policies? That's great. That's 15% on top of what GEICO could already save you. So what are you waiting for? John Stamos to knit you a scarf? I'll finish, Gene. Enjoy. Thank you. I give. Stitch work is impeccable. That's nah, just a double fleck pattern with a reverse garter stitch. No big deal. Is your hair this soft? Soft. Geico. Save an extra 15% when you switch by October 7th. Orchard Crest Retirement and Assisted Living is Spokane Valley's exceptional living community. Our residents choose Orchard Crest because of our amenities, our lifestyle, and most importantly, the quality of life you and your family deserve. Exercise sessions, swimming activities, socials, walking groups, and an on-site salon are just the beginning. With more than 150 monthly activities, Orchard Crest Retirement and Assisted Living is your life, your home. Call us today to schedule a tour. Come for the fairways. Leave with a fortune.
Now, your local Storm Tracker 2 forecast. Welcome back, everyone. It is 815 right now. We are getting a check of your forecast to start off your Thursday morning. Pretty cloudy skies. Of course, a contrast compared to earlier this week with very hot temperatures overnight in the 70s and sunny skies. Now we're cloudy and we've got those temperatures back down to the 60s. Even just a 24 hour temperature change showing it's six degrees colder in Spokane right now than 24 hours ago. 11 degrees colder in Sandpoint. And not only are we contending with, uh, you know, cloud cover, slightly cooler temperatures. We also have quite a breeze coming through. So this does keep our fire danger elevated into the majority of the day today and again tomorrow. Wind gusts in Spokane are going to be mainly in the teens, high teens, and then low 20 mile per hour range through the central uh, Washington region. All the way through North Idaho, though, we're going to be seeing those breezy conditions today and again tomorrow. So just something to keep an eye on. You can see those uh, clouds just moving farther inland. And as we go into the next several hours, we will begin to see them part quite a bit. So by noon, we'll start to see maybe partly cloudy conditions. Looks like most of those showers will have subsided, but we are going to be joined again tomorrow by more clouds. So uh, they'll be fewer and far between, but we're not going to be really seeing completely sunny conditions going into the next 48 hours or so, as there's still plenty of activity over on the west side of the state that's attempting to make its way towards us unsuccessfully, but still bringing some clouds all the way through your early Saturday morning through the panhandle and even a few residual showers in the mix as well. We are keeping an eye on your smoke and haze forecast. So far, so good. We've actually been doing really well this uh, this year so far this summer with our air quality. You can see the area highlighted in that gray color has a chance for some hazy skies, but uh, that means we're likely just going to stay in the good and moderate range for our air quality. Uh, worse air quality farther down to the south of us where the pretty hazy conditions down around uh, southern Oregon and southern Idaho too. High temperatures this afternoon, mainly 80s and 90s, 83 for Coeur d'Alene, 84 for Spokane, 90 this afternoon in Moses Lake. Looking at that seven day forecast, we do have 80s pretty much all the way through the next seven days. Clouds do join us at times, but otherwise overnight lows finally cooling down to the mid 50s. It is coming up now on 820. Time for the speed feed stories you may see today on social media. The Tiger Kingdom is closed. This week, the zoo that gained popularity on the Netflix documentary Tiger King permanently closed its doors. Owner Jeff Lowe claims the USDA suspended his license. 
He accused the agency of making false claims following pressure from PETA. This morning, TSA is hosting a cute dog contest. It's for explosive detection canines. Now, the contest leads up to National Dog Day on August 26. TSA handlers nationwide nominated their partners, and the pool is now whittled down to four finalists. This week, people can vote on Twitter for the cutest pup. This week's matchup is between Cagela in Hawaii and Johnny in Arizona. Next week, Alexa Alexi from Texas takes on Sweet Ron from Oakland International Airport in California. And you can make your vote right now on the TSA Twitter account. Well, girls are running the Marvel world. Olivia Wilde is set to produce a female-led Marvel movie. Fans are speculating it is Spider-Man, or perhaps in this case, Spider-Woman. Hey, and check this out. It's a drive through haunted house in Japan. It opened this week in Tokyo. Well, now horror fans can get their thrill without ever leaving their cars. A Japanese production company opened that haunted house in response to the pandemic. And here I thought we were weeks away from Halloween, but I guess it's already here, Evan. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, hey, we got to start planning now. We're, I mean, it is still two months out, but I, it's not surprising that people are already planning. I feel like it reminds me of like Candy Cane Lane during Christmas, but this time it's just going to be a completely haunted setting. I know Joshua, Scary Woods, the big one around here to go to. I know that's going to look a little different this year. They're not going to have it, but I'm wondering if there's a way to make it happen, you know, do a drive through thing like this. Yeah, you know, I love haunted houses, period. Every year, no matter what way that you have to get me in there, get me scared. But I'm trying to imagine what it would be like sitting there next to the driver's side window and just <laughs> having someone bang on the window. I would love it, but I think in the moment I'd be... It'd be jarring. Oh, great. <laughs> I would hit the gas pedal and yeah, be like, exactly. oh, <laughs> rear-end the person in front of me. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there could be additional dangers that we didn't right. consider. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. All right, guys, thanks. It is 822 now. Well, a viral video showing ballot return envelopes labeled with R&D is causing some concern on social media. Coming up, our Verify team takes a look.
825 this morning. We are tracking breaking news this morning. A federal judge has rejected President Trump's latest effort to block a New York attorney from obtaining his tax returns. That's according to the New York Times. And the judge says the president failed to show that the subpoena would pose an unfair burden. Trump has called the ruling wildly overboard and issued in bad faith. The ruling comes just one month after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the president was not entitled to immunity against a grand jury subpoena. Trump's attorney says he plans to file an appeal to the Supreme Court. In case you missed it, family and friends of the mother murdered in Brown's edition will host a vigil to honor her life this Saturday. Two weeks ago, Mary Schaefer was visiting Spokane to pick up her kids when she was shot and killed. Her ex-husband, Nathan Beal, has been charged for that murder. And while Mary's family and friends mourn her death, they also hope to bring awareness to domestic violence. She unfortunately became a statistic, and we want to make sure that those statistics can, can continue to go down and that we can continue to preserve life. The vigil will be held Saturday at 8.15 p.m. at Coeur d'Alene Park. And this week, we have learned from Spokane County court documents that Beale is also a suspect in the death of 30-year-old Andrew Bull. Bull was a homeless man who was found dead in April in downtown Spokane Alley. He has not been charged, but court records do show he is being investigated for that crime. Well, this morning we do have a few wildfire updates for you, starting with the Palmer Fire. It is burning in Okanagan County near OMAC. Now, if you were sent in this picture, you can see a lot of smoke and some flames there. Uh, heavy smoke for that area. Well, level three evacuation orders, though, are now expanded. It means you need to get out now. It applies to areas along the Loomis Oroville Road from Tropica Road to Totes Coulee Road. Level two evacuations apply to the area extending one and a half miles east of Wanaka Lake Road from Ellis Barnes Road in the north and south to Richards Road. It means you need to be ready to leave at a moment's notice. Now that fire sparked Tuesday, burning about 5,000 acres so far. And right now authorities say it is threatening at least 86 homes. Crews from across the state were also called in to help and the American Red Cross is assisting evacuees. Well, this morning, the Badger Lake fire in uh, southwest of Cheney is now 55% contained. Evacuation orders are reduced to a level two for Cutthroat Road and Badger Lake estates. Again, level two means you need to be ready to leave at a moment's notice. It is 827. We'll have more of your headlines and a look at your forecast coming up on the CW22. Up with Crim begins now.
830 on your Thursday morning. Boy, what a difference a few years can make as you take a look at these air quality maps during this week compared to the same week over the last two years. The air quality has been better this year than it was last year and significantly better than it was in 2018. I'm sure many of you remember the smoky haze that kept a lot of us inside for days. So we're checking with Evan Arani this morning. We have had a lot of wildfires reported so far this season, but it's much more clear than the smoky forecast we've seen in the past. Yeah, a lot of the fires haven't been quite as large in size. They haven't been quite as close. It really is also dependent on wind speeds, mm -hmm. wind direction. So there's a lot of factors kind of working at once. We can see wildfires that are states away down in California or Nevada and still see hazardous air quality up around us, even if those fires aren't burning near us. So it's really uh, dependent depending on a lot of different factors working at once. But right now, I mean, things are looking really good. Air quality is in the good range and uh, we haven't had many issues this uh, this summer so far related to uh, to that poor air quality. Yeah, but the wind is still there and the heat is still there. Evan, what else can we respect on our Thursday? Yeah, so still plenty of fire danger out there for additional fires to start up. It looks like right now we are still tracking some showers off toward the North Idaho Panhandle moving through western Montana. Some lightning bolts that you see on your screen there indicating uh, that there is the, there are are some thunderstorms passing through. Uh, cloud cover is pretty significant across eastern Washington and North Idaho. Important to note in that we are still going to be seeing kind of overcast conditions to start off the day. Wind speeds pretty constant in the high single digits for the most part. 10 mile an hour sustained speeds in Pomeroy, 6 in Spokane and 5 in Coeur d'Alene. Let's take a look at the next three days. The temperatures are cooling down compared to the triple digits that we saw earlier this week. We're going to be mainly in the 80s for the next several days, making it only to 84 degrees this afternoon. Those clouds will part quite a bit and to partly cloudy conditions through the afternoon and then Friday and Saturday mostly sunny to partly cloudy temperatures in the high 80s for Friday low 80s for your Saturday Joshua thank you very much Evan 832 now here on your Thursday Senator Kamala Harris has officially accepted the Democratic vice presidential nomination accepting it last night as the new official nominee she actually opened her speech on night three of the Democratic National Convention by shouting out the women before her from Hillary Clinton to Shirley Chisholm then rallied what she called the new generation of voters. So make no mistake, the road ahead is not easy. We may stumble, we may fall short, but I pledge to you that we will act boldly and deal with our challenges honestly. Former President Barack Obama also spoke just before Senator Harris, who used examples from his administration to argue that Joe Biden will be a good pick for president. Obama said Biden will get the coronavirus pandemic under control and rescue the economy. Obama also took on President Trump. For close to four years now, he has shown no interest in putting in the work. No interest in finding common ground. No interest in using the awesome power of his office to help anyone but himself and his friends. Now, President Trump appeared to be watching and tweeting in real time in response to several of last night's speakers. First, President Obama and then Senator Harris. The Republican National Convention, by the way, starts next week. But another big moment last night in an emotional speech, former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. Giffords is a Democratic Senate candidate. She made headlines back in January of 2011 after surviving an assassination attempt in Tucson, Arizona. But I have not lost my voice. America needs all of us to speak out, even when you have to fight to find the words. And the convention culminates tonight when former President Biden formally accepts the Democratic nomination. 834 now. Well, trending this morning is Spokane native Keyboard Cat. The internet icon is getting a big feature in Tesla cars thanks to Elon Musk. Now, the Keyboard Cat theme song will be featured in a music app in all Tesla cars. Now, that app allows drivers to come up with their own tunes. They'll be able to build off the Keyboard Cat song and make their own unique tune. Keyboard Cat's owner Charlie Schmidt wrote that tune back in 1984. Schmidt says Musk himself asked to use that song in the Tesla library. He must be a fan of cats. I'm going to say 
He's a cat man, Evan. Yeah, it seems like it. I mean, we got, oh, this is so cute, meeting <laughs> keyboard cat, and, or at least another generation of keyboard cat. And um, no, I mean, it's, it's super cool to see. Like we were talking about, interesting to try to see maybe how you would be making music while you're in your Tesla, that kind of thing. I'm not quite sure how it works. It's kind of the hands-free car, so it drives itself. I think you think you're supposed to keep a, an, an eye on it, but I'm wondering if this is part of the, you know, in-car entertainment, Joshua. Yeah. I, I gotta say, I just love the idea that Elon Musk is like, you know what this car really needs? This car really needs keyboard cap. That's what this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we gotta be able to produce some music in yeah. this car. <laughs> what mind. every driver thinks, right, when they're hitting the road. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Elon speaking for all of us at that one. All right, but still very cool nonetheless for keyboard cat guys. Thank you. It is coming up now on 836. Well, the November election is less than 90 days away, and this morning there are several posts online about the best way to vote. Now, one viral video claims voting by mail could lead to fraud due to a label on the back of an envelope. Our Verify team explains. The Verify team wants to be your resource when it comes to getting vetted information about the 2020 election. If you see something that's suspicious online, just send it to us and we'll find out what's real and what's not. There are people that probably know this, but I just found this out today. Take this video, which has been viewed more than 150,000 times in just one tweet alone. The woman shows two ballots side by side, saying that one of them came to her brother, a Democrat, and the other came to her, a Republican. They put R right here and D right there. So a postal person could see this if they're a Democrat and say, oh, that's an R. Let's toss it, let's just chuck it, and we'll keep this one. So let's verify, were these envelopes labeled with an R or a D to indicate a political party? Our sources are the Palm Beach County Supervisor of Elections Office and the National Conference of State Legislatures. We started by tracing the video back to Palm Beach County in Florida. On their website, the Palm Beach County Supervisor of Elections verifies that yes, these were labeled R and D for the voters registered political party. But context is everything. A spokesperson for the Supervisor of Elections Office says that these envelopes in the video were used for voting in the primary. Florida has a closed primary, which means you can only cast your ballot for your registered party. When it comes to the general election, though, in November, the spokesperson tells us the envelopes will look the same for both parties. Quote, there'd be no way to tell the party affiliation of a voter based on their vote by mail ballot envelope. So we can verify that those labeled envelopes pictured in that video will not be used in November. With your verify, this is Evan Kozlov. Still to come here on up with Krem CenturyLink Field, home to some of the loudest fans in the NFL, may lose a bit of its home field advantage this season. Coming up, what you need to know about the Seattle Seahawks' first home game. And outside, we're seeing cloudy skies, a few showers out there. We'll talk about what your forecast looks like coming up.